introduce Tommy Palm, who is the mobile guru at King.com, to tell us a little bit about why. Tommy? Thank you, David. Uh, hi, I'm Tommy Palm, and I'll be talking about best practicing for creating and distributing games cross-platform. I always like to start from the beginning. Uh, 1,200 years ago, uh, Hamburg allegedly got its name from, from this castle that you can see on the coat of arms. Uh, it's, uh, it was also the home of the bishop at that time and acted as a church. So people would, would come here and that would be the, the normal place to see art and, and socialize. And uh, church it keep, kept having this very central role for hundreds of years until somewhere in the 1950s, uh, cinema took over a part of the, the social hub role and, and started uh, to be the center of conversational topics. Uh, I saw this great quote at Reddit. It's a Q&A, and, and they're asking, if somebody from the 1950s suddenly appeared today, what would be the most difficult thing to explain to them about life today? And the most popular answer is, I possess a device in my pocket that is capable of accessing the entirety of information known to man. I use it to look at pictures of cats. It, uh, today we have information at the hands of our fingers. We can access movies, books, etc., everywhere. Um, I'll be talking today about creating and distributing games that spans multiple channels, such as PC, tablets, and smartphones. I'll use both Bubble Witch and Candy Crush Saga as examples. This picture here is a picture of cats, kittens, and it's a marketing picture that we took for our Facebook fan page. I personally directed these two models, and I used to think that creating games was difficult, but getting these cats to play the game simultaneously look into the camera was quite a challenge. So <clears throat> today, the agenda for the presentation can be seen here at this board game. Uh, I'm take you through how King became the number one game on Facebook uh, with Candy Crush in less time than it took to develop a AAA console title. I'll give some background here at the Fountain of Fortune where we sort out the big fish from the smalls, go on to the gingerbread house uh, of uh, game creation to finally end up in the circus of the future, where I'll talk about trends, etc. This is a chart of the daily active users on Facebook for, for King's Games, uh, according to app data. And uh, King has been around for, for more than a decade, but it wasn't until the start of 2011 when uh, we made start making games for Facebook. And during this period, we've made seven games for Facebook, and we've grown to about 20 million daily active users. You can see some really important milestones here. Somewhere here, uh, Bubble Witch Saga was launched uh, on Facebook. And here in November, uh, Candy Crush uh, Mobile uh, was released, so for, for smartphones and iPads. And that's the power of, of cross-platform uh, for, for the slant of this curve here. Uh, to celebrate this, we released an infographic that states some trivia about Candy Crush, uh, like the fact that it's been played uh, more than 100,000 years if you combine the game sessions, or that one trillion candies have been crushed, which is more than the uh, stars in our galaxy. Incredible number. But also some very interesting points that are facts. Uh, that's actually useful. Uh, this is about 70% women who play Candy Crush, and that's not only rare for games, but it's very important from a social aspect. Now, I'll come back to that. Uh, the infographic also uh, revealed that we had more than 10 million downloads uh, in December for mobile devices, and that we are uh, looking for to recruit heavily to continue meeting the demand of, of our fans. I, th I see three platforms that is shaping the future of games. The first one that I would like to mention is, is Facebook itself. It's, it reaches a large population of first-time gamers that we're educating about games for the first time. And they are getting used to that the games are free. I couldn't help bringing the top 10 chart of Facebook games on, on DAO here because we're very proud of having three positions in the top 10 chart right now. 
Um, the second platform is smartphones. Steve Jobs never set out to change games. He wasn't very much into games, to my understanding. But the smartphone revolution that he started with the iPhone changed the landscape of gaming forever. I have been working with mobile games for almost 10 years when this happened. And there wasn't a, a working mobile games market, really, before this change happened. And the change came very much in, in the accessibility of the touch screen, just as Jens mentioned. The simplicity and innovation of the user interfaces is the, the key here to the popularity of this. Um, the third platform is tablets. Uh, they're very similar to smartphones, but also very different. Uh, this device can be dedicated for gaming in a whole different manner. I, I definitely think that this is the best gaming platform out there right now. And as a game developer, it's important to respect that this is a separate platform for the smartphone, mainly because of the user pattern that is very different. This is a really uh, interesting chart from Business Insider. Uh, it's the growth of, of uh, smartphones and tablets and PCs. The red uh, line here, still growing, is the sales of, of PCs. And we are currently here in time. So this is a prediction of the future. And you can see that there is enormous um, potential if you're making a cross-platform game that spans all these three uh, platforms. And casual games fit this profile really well. This is an example with Bubble Witch that you can play uh, over all these uh, platforms like smartphone, tablets, and PC. And that's what I'm referring to when I'm talking about cross-platform to game today. In Bubble Witch, you typically access the, the, the same game state information that's available on the internet. So you have a seamless experience. You can play the game on the bus and continue when you come home. And I have a question mark here because I think that there is some interesting development going on in the future on, on other screens that can be utilized in the same way, such as uh, smart TVs or glasses. We'll, we'll see. Um, so we have come to the, to the second part of this, the creating of, of cross-platform games. Personally, I think that creating games is one of the most fascinating jobs you can have. It's, it's the ultimate manifestation of civilization, where you need to understand on a low level how the brain works. It's a good game is a result of integrating design, music, graphics, programming together in a perfect uh, product. It requires a lot of teamwork, effort, and planning. And Games, as you know, is an extremely hit-driven business. So it's important from a business perspective to, to remove as much risk as possible. Uh, the way we do that at King is that we remove the guesswork by, by having this King.com portal where we have 11 million uh, active players that can, can test pretty simple small games where we have teams of two to three people testing new game mechanics. Then we measure carefully to see how popular this is, how good the retention are, et cetera. And if it's, if it's a winner, we, we wrap it in this social envelope, this saga framework, and bring it onwards to other platforms, such as Facebook and, uh, and mobile. Uh, with the example of Bubble Witch Saga here, uh, we had a very popular, this is Bubble Witch, that was available on King.com. And we saw that the numbers were fantastic. So we were already convinced that we had something big going on when we created this. With a little larger team, still not a lot of people. Uh, the, the team sizes are about eight people for, to create a mobile version of this. Um, and for the, for the mobile version, uh, we felt that it was very good to, to enable you to be able to play the game without connecting to Facebook. And we've been pushing hard also so you can play the game offline, because we think that you know, real great games should be available at, at, uh, without uh, accessing the networks. Uh, but we see that there is uh, a lot of reason to, to have players connecting to Facebook. It, it increases the retention the engagement and the likeliness to play. So these, these players are much more loyal. So we, we try to encourage them to come over and play. And that's not strange at all. It's just a lot more fun to play with your friends and more meaningful when you see them in the game. 
Uh, just my five cents on, on creating cross-platform games. Small, multi-talented teams working in agile uh, project um, uh, methodology like Scrum is, is one of the key factors that I really enjoy making work. Rapid prototyping testing. I mentioned how, how we, we do that at King. Uh, no tutorials is, is a good uh, measurement to see if, if, you're, if your game needs a tutorial. Uh, already from the start when you're developing it, you're probably not uh, in the casual segment. You can add a tutorial later, but it shouldn't be an, an, a need for it. The respect of data. A lot of people uh, have to be employed to, to really gather, analyze, and act on data. Uh, currently, we have about uh, 2.5 billion data points each day that we collect from our games. And it, it's a daunting task to, to get uh, useful information about that. But that's very important in this, uh, um, where we are right now with games. And intuitive game controls. So I was happy to see that, uh, that Jens spoke about this. Because um, I'll, I'll be touching on the direct controls as well. I've written here that mouse is not the same as a touchscreen and not the same as a joypad. They're quite different from each other. And uh, direct control is a super intuitive way of controlling a game. And that's one of the key success factors behind smartphone games, I think. There is no layer of abstraction in between. And it's so simple, so young, very young kids uh, can play it. And even frogs. I don't know if you've seen this video from a bullfrog playing a game called Ant Smasher, but it, it's really great. He is catching the ants with his tongue. And, and he's, seems to have fun playing the game. So I recommend you check it out. And it, it's a great viral video. It ends with him biting the, the player, the, the guy with the phone in the thumb. Uh, but my point is here that, that accessibility is, is one key factor of, of making uh, great, uh, great cross-platform games. So uh, over to the third part about distribution. Uh, Marketing and branding is one of the great differentiators in, in the digital marketplace. Uh, there is so many games out there, and they're all just a few clicks away. So how can you get people to find your games? One of the most important uh, resources a game company has is its active user base, the network of players among the games. They can be used uh, next time you have a new release. You can take uh, some of them over and, and uh, um, help you to, to uh, get your release uh, up in the charts as soon as possible. This is the free, uh, top free list for iPhone. And your app doesn't end up here by coincidence. It takes around 150,000 downloads per day to get up here in the top chart of the US uh, list. And the extra downloads you get by being there makes it well worth uh, aiming to, to get up there. And with, as with any marketing, a broad approach is better. You typically want to hit all your channels as one to boost this. Uh, and I'll be talking specifically more about Facebook, as that comes pretty natural to, to King. Uh, if you look at this chart of, of PC Facebook app discovery, you can see that it's mainly viral. 43% uh, discovers games by friend invites. That means that for the, the paid advertising, you get about half a player for free, which is great. If you look at mobile uh, app discovery, it's much more driven by the app stores. And this is uh, much harder to control, of course. Uh, you can't buy visibility on, on the app stores. Uh, you can increase your chances of getting a feature if you remember uh, if you carefully what these companies like Apple and Google, why they, they feature games. They, they're selling hardware. They want games that are promoting their, their uh, devices. One great way of, of helping uh, promoting games on, on mobile is using Facebook. There is uh, more than a billion active Facebook users, and a lot of them are using the mobile app. And that's a really powerful discovery tool. Um, so in the 
case example of Bubble Witch, if you play a game and you challenge one of your friends, you send them a request, it will go uh, from desktop to mobile and vice versa and create a notification. And if he clicks on this notification and you have a mobile game, uh, it will take the user straight to the App Store if he doesn't, doesn't already have the game, or it will uh, take him straight into the game if it already has that installed. So this is, this is a, a very efficient way of, of spreading uh, information about your game. And there is many different uh, channels, of course. It's notifications that I noticed. It's the news feed and timeline. There is bookmarks of the most uh, frequent used apps. And you can now buy uh, mobile advertising directly from Facebook, which is a good combination. Um, so um, I just want to touch on uh, the social aspects I mean, if you look at the, the games Bubble Witch and Candy Crush, the, the, the social layer is, is rather light from a development perspective. But the ramification it has uh, when you identify who is playing the games is, is very, very important. Because truly social is when people actually are doing things together. Uh, this is a, a picture from Instagram with a bunch of friends who are, are eating lunch and actually playing Candy Crush in real life, <laughs> meeting up. And I think that's the greatest potential with cross-platform, when you have a really social activity around the games. It's not longer seen as nerdy if you, if you have something that everybody can, can be a part of. Nerdiness is, is when a small uh, group of people uh, tend to do something that, that the other can't join. But with, with uh, one of the great things with making it accessible to everybody is that it's, it's much uh, more a social thing that you can actually have a, a dinner conversation about. And um, the fact that these games work great for women is, is really makes it accessible to the whole family. And then we've seen a lot of examples of guys who've introduced the games to their girlfriends. They've always wanted, they've been a gamer for many years and they've always wanted to find a, a good excuse to get their girlfriends to play with her, and uh, uh, this is this is a great game to to introduce them to. And this type of uh, marketing, this is a user who who uh, been uh, very innovative herself, and then painted her nails as Candy Crush uh, candies. Uh, you can you can buy this marketing, and it's very very uh, efficient. Um, so we've reached the end of, of the board game, and uh, I'll just recap. I think that casual games has a great future ahead of it, uh, and it's spelled cross-platform. Uh, and I think that uh, truly social is when, when the games come out of the, of the actual device, and can, you can talk about it uh, during the, the dinner conversation. And I think that these games will be the, the dominating brand creator of this decade, just as, as movies was in the 1950s, for instance. Thank you very much for listening, and yeah. Thank you, Tony. So at the start of your presentation, part of that infographic that you didn't point out, you came close to, was that there were 1% of your audience that didn't identify as either men or women. Um, and I would, I, it didn't make sense to me until I saw the bullfrog video. <laughs> so I'm assuming that that 1% is in fact the frogs. And cats, don't forget and cats. cats. Well, I would imagine the cats identify as either male or female, but frogs don't. Any questions for Tommy? Here. Hi, I'm Christy from Avonhut. Um, I really, uh, I, I'm a big fan of King.com. I think you guys have been through an amazing journey and going from platform to platform and um, having all those major hits there, I think it's been amazing. My question to you is, Thank you. if you'd have to name only one challenge, the biggest challenge that you'd have had when you went from um, desktop to mobile, what was it? Um, so that's a very good question. What was the biggest challenge when going from desktop to mobile? Um, I 
there's been so many small challenges together, like the, everything works differently in marketing. And, and, uh, but uh, we, we took, uh, we assigned ourselves the mission to make the game really be the same game and, and make it work so you access this exactly the same game. And that has been a, a big challenge. So making sure that the levels weren't easier or more difficult on, on one platform from the other. Uh, we also, when we made Candy Crush, we, we really want to make sure that it felt that it was native to the, the mobile platform. So everything was rebuilt from scratch in C++. And, and there is small details, like you can, you can play in both landscape and portrait. So it's really important. We, we don't speak about porting. We speak about adapting the game and making sure that it's, it's really native. So I, I would say that that is the biggest challenge that we, we encounter. Any other questions? Hi there, Jonathan Young from Culture Translate. I was wondering about um, the audience that you have uh, internationally and you know European. Like, where are they from? Are they distributed evenly around uh, different countries, or are they predominantly English-speaking? For example, how important is languages to your offerings? Uh, languages is v is very important. We have uh, localized our games into, I think it's 14 different languages for for Candy Crush. Uh, we have been uh, on the mobile side. We've been on the top lists in in most uh, major Western markets. Uh, we are very curious about but Asia, but but we haven't. Uh, that's that's a challenge that is ahead. Uh, so uh, our biggest market is typically UK, uh, US, you know, France, Germany, and and. Um, it is available uh, in those languages. But I really think that, that uh, lo localization is, is a very important thing. It comes back to the accessibility of everybody should be able to play the game. So it's, it's important to, to do that. Hello, thank you for your presentation, Tommy. I had a question. How much time did it take from the very beginning like the concept of, of all this Candy Crush saga till the end, this mobile. What, what was the timeline? Could you tell us about it? Um, yeah, the uh, Candy Crush saga was released on desktop in uh, April 2012. And it was released on mobile in, in November. Um, uh, we, we had been elaborating with different kind of switchers and match three games on, on King.com for a long time. So uh, the Candy Crush was, was it's, it's been in the workings in many iterations for, for long. I'm not sure when it was released on King.com, but um, it, it's, it's a fairly uh, rapid process because we, the team sizes are, are small. Uh, it's very efficient technology to, to work with, with web and, and mobile like this. What can, you, what can you tell us about relative response rates for viral messaging on Facebook mobile versus Facebook web? I'm way back here. Hi. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, sorry, could you repeat that? Yeah, so when you're, you talked about using Facebook virals to drive distribution and engagement of the games from, from the desktop to the mobile, from the mobile to the desktop, and from mobile to mobile, the viral response rates on the PC are pretty low. Are they better on mobile? Um, I'm, I'm, I don't have any of those numbers in my head, but I, we, we have a pretty good, uh, it works really well with, with this type of game. It's, as with any type of marketing, it, it helps out. If Candy Crush is something you heard before, some friend mentioned it, once something becomes a phenomenon, it, it tends to spread much more easily. So um, the feeling I have is not that it's, it's a low conversion. It's, it's pretty efficient. Any other questions for Tommy? Oh. Hi. Um, how do you encourage uh, 
users to do the Facebook Connect? Um, well, uh, it's, it's up to the games team to decide. When it comes to Bubble Witch, for instance, there was a, a, a small reward in, in terms of coins that you could uh, get if you connected. Um, and we also encourage it in a way that we, we inform people that you get five lives on Facebook and you get five lives on mobile. So if you run out of life, we remind them that they can continue playing on another device. So that's an efficient way. You that's always have brilliant. to be. Um, you always have to be careful uh, because there's a lot of rules and regulation on what you can do uh, to in incentivize downloads on, on different platforms. Hi. Um, can you talk a bit about the difference in monetization between different platforms? Do, do you see more um, more monetiz easy to monetize in one platform versus the other, mobile versus Facebook, for example? Um, yes. Um, I there is a widely known fact. I think that, for instance, uh, the there is a lot more Android users. Then there is uh, iPhone users, but iPhone users uh, are uh, higher, have higher ARPU. Uh, th they're uh, the same type of things also uh, when going from, from desktop to, to mobile. Uh, with mobile, one great thing is that it's, uh, it's very easy to, to pay and it's easy to interact. That's, that's one key factor, I think. Thank you very much, Tommy.